I think it is that time. Oh, I got to pull up the chat here. Hold on. There we go. How is everybody on this fine Saturday? Back at it here. What's going on, Shadow Wolf? Tim, outdoors with Matthew. We're getting into 1862 at long last. January 1862. Looks like the Union has passed industrialization too. What's going on, Brant Man? And we have sent a bunch of units home to refit. Some of the units that when we recruited them had a small number of men to begin with because we didn't have the max number of men available. Um, and now because of multiple battles have seen their numbers dwindle drastically. Uh, so for example here, Little's Division in the Western Army, uh, Barton was down to like 800 men. Uh, Flemish Lions were down to 600 men. Uh, so we've actually sent uh, most of that division home to refit Yuma Territorial Guards down to 600 men. So we sent them home because refitting by sending them home uh, or replenishing uh, will build them back up a lot faster than if we just keep them in the army and keep taking casualties uh, in the field. So what's going on, Nathaniel? Battle River Rebels. Tim, what's up? We have almost all of our units recruited. The only ones we're waiting on are just a couple that were requested from Virginia where we currently have no men available. We're waiting to get some more policies enacted uh, that will allow us to get those men available. I'll show you what's available currently from each state. Alabama's got a decent amount. Arkansas, Georgia's got 3,000. Indian Territory's got 2,000. Uh, Kentucky's got 3,500. Um, oh, Virginia's actually got enough now, so we could actually recruit those Virginia units. So give me just a second here. You're going to see some crazy stuff happening on the screen because I have to switch over. Um, there we go. Uh, let's see. So let me go to my Virginia units that have been requested and get them in here. Um, we're going to do them at the small amount because... I think I've got two Virginia units I've got to request. I've got to put in. So um, one of them is going to be Swedish Royal Guards, and uh, those will be from Virginia volunteers. But we're going to make it a 1,500 man brigade, and uh, let's give them some good like Swedish looking uniforms here. He didn't give me any particular unit request or uniform request. But we'll do something that looks like the Swedish flag a little bit. I'll get back to the chat in a second. I can't see it at the moment because I've got Patreon pulled up. I don't think we have any weapons, but we're about 10 days away from a nice shipment of rifles that are coming in. So uh, that'll help a lot. Uh, okay, uh, so that one's good. Now I've got one more, I think, Virginia unit. Oh, we've got a Florida unit too. So that one might be waiting a little while while we get some, for, uh, some Florida troops. I know there was one more Virginia, VMI infantry for Jim O'Hare. Uh, so let's get that one in there real quick. Um, I don't know why I recruited a Virginia unit for the Western Army, but we'll go with it. Let's go back to Army of Northern Virginia now. And we'll get this last unit in there. Gray jackets, red pants. And he wanted the slouch hat. Got a couple different kind of slouch hats, but we'll go with that one. We can always change it. Uh, first, VMI infantry. There we go. Okay, let me pull the chat back up. And we'll be good to go here. Having a drought there. Oh, no. Zach, what's going on? Dermot, why would you think that uh, you have upset me? I don't know that Abe Lincoln had much of a relationship with Queen Victoria. All right, so we still have the Army of Northwe the Northwest stuck down here trying to deal with Fort Caswell. Um, 
it is winter, so we're not going to do a ton of movement right now. We're mostly just going to kind of try to refit and replenish our armies. But I do want to try and deal with Fort Caswell and be able to get that Army of the Northwest back onto the front lines. Uh, yeah, Chris, at some point I will need to get conscription just because the Union will get conscription. Uh, and I will find myself just desperately outnumbered. Whereas right now it's pretty close. It's not going to stay that way. Uh, we are really close to having print notes one, two and a half days away on that policy. Uh, project wise, we don't have a lot going on right now. Uh, I do have some weapons that are about to, oh, what happened here? Uh, we've got some new, sh new ships, but the last few times I've taken the Navy out, it has not ended well. So uh, probably not going to do that anytime soon here. Uh, let's take a look at what's currently ordered. We've got a bunch of cavalry weapons that are currently ordered. Our Mississippi rivals are long way off. Long way off. Um, Springfields, we got 10,000 coming in three weeks. These Augustins are actually a day away, and we've got 25,000 of them. So that is huge. As soon as we get that order, that's going to help a ton. There it is. Battle Fort uh, Caswell ended with the Union units retreating in panic. Let's pause real quick. Let's very quickly assign a garrison to Fort Caswell. We're going to put two brigades and a battery in there. Now, let's go to the military for a second here. A lot of housekeeping stuff that I'm doing here. Upgrade my soul iron mine next to Knoxville. Good idea, Volk. Um, all right, so let's go to the Army of Northern Virginia. Pretty much a lot of... Uh, we've got a lot of rifle muskets there. Let's upgrade them to the Augustans. These Augustans are rifled muskets with a 350-yard range. Their accuracy is poor, though. So we're actually going to keep the planes rifles there. The main thing is we just want to upgrade from rifled musk or from muskets to rifles wherever we can. And this is actually going to then free up those muskets to replace some of the um, the mixed muskets that I currently have in some of these units. There's not too many that still have those, but there are some. Like right there. I don't know how many of these I still have. Let's see where we're at. Your favorite state's North Carolina. Very cool. Uh, oh, let's go ahead and place another order for those Augustans now that those ones have come in before I forget. We've still got 6,000 of them. Let's order another 25,000. Those are Austrian weapons. And of course, we capture guns every so often on the battlefield, too. All right, we printed our new notes. Uh, so that has helped a little bit with our credit rating. We just need to keep an eye on that at all times. Uh, let's go back to policies now and look at where we're at. I would very much like to do Diplomacy 3. Uh, we could do the Conscription Act, but I feel like until the Union does it, I'm not in a huge hurry to do it myself. Impressment Act would help a lot with the cost of supplies and the number of recruits, I feel like that's not a bad idea. It'll drop support a little bit, but our support's pretty good right now. Uh, what game do I prefer? Um, that's a tough one. Those are probably my two favorite games right now. Hearts of Iron uh, 4 and this one. I, I probably would say Hearts of Iron 4 just because of the ability to mod. So there's a lot more customization and kind of uh, variety that you can get in the gameplay. Uh, so let's go ahead now and get that Army of the Northwest. Uh, all right, AP Hill's got his upgrade. I always like to go with the Ambulance Corps first because it's a nice way of getting troops back in the fight. 
Uh, we're actually going to send the Army of the Northwest, I think, over here to Knoxville for now. Uh, it's a tough time of year to be moving, but I, I want to try and get something in the center here because right now there's a big gap between theaters where I don't have a lot uh, in the way of troops. Looks like we're still sitting. We're moving on Cairo with the Trans-Mississippi Theater. Could potentially have Guardians versus Astros. I would love to see it, Zach. I uh, Got to get past the Yankees first, but uh, we pulled one out yesterday. If we can win two straight at home, we'll be on to the ALCS. I'll be very happy with that, especially with the youngest team in the majors. Greetings in Austria. Very cool. We were just uh, using some Austrian weapons here. Foxhole. I've played Foxhole a little bit. It's been a while. You took out Poland and Germany as USSR before 1937. Nice. Who's back? Colonel Gladden has recovered. So there's not going to be a lot of combat here, at least for a little while. Uh, it's the middle of winter. Everybody's kind of in winter quarters. Officer rehabilitated. The Hartley Colliery disaster. Colliery is uh, basically where coal is processed. This happened out in England. Coal mining accident. Pumping engine beam fractured. All right, let's take a look at available projects for a second. We have a bunch. Cavalry Reform 2. I'm not entirely sure that's what we need. Confederate guns, maybe. Supply Reform wouldn't be a bad idea. It's not... That's weird. It's not popping up and telling me what these do. Oh, there we go. We got to click on it. Uh, allows upgrading existing supply depots to levels two and three, greatly increasing the efficiency of depots. Let's do that. And we've got a battle in the Trans Mississippi Theater. Again, we've got some morale issues there, but pretty even in terms of the numbers. So this is Wadsworth against John Singleton Mosby. Here we go. Guardians versus Braves, the old school rivalry from the 90s. Yes, the 95 series. I've played a lot of War Thunder, Shadow Wolf. I've done a ton of streams on this channel uh, for War Thunder. Calvin, what's up? We'll see what happens here. This is a small battle. Battle of Cairo, Illinois. All right, this is huge because Cairo is a real key place for the Union. This is where it was kind of Grant's home base early on. It's right there where the Ohio and Mississippi rivers come together. And so it was a key kind of jumping off point for the Union. Um, it's right down there, kind of the tip of the spear going into the south on the Western Theater. Uh, very swampy area. And so it's important for us to win this one. This is uh, an attack. Uh, so we have to take the objective, which he already holds. And he's got a strong position because he's got the Hoedown River right there. So let's see who it is that uh, has the morale issue. Because we've got a, a unit with a morale issue here. Parsons Division's unstable. These guys are stable. They're stable. Stable, unstable. So we might, this just might be a matter of kind of waiting a little while to launch the attack until these units have a chance to stabilize some. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the long way around. We're going to go down this road, come around this way, avoid hitting him where these crossings are in case he's protecting against those crossings. And we're going to come in over on this side that'll kind of be the goal here
forming the Nordic leagues. Ooh, very interesting. I was actually thinking about last night, you know, sometimes when I'm laying in bed, I'll, I'll play um, a little bit of uh, Hearts of Iron while I'm kind of laying there trying to fall asleep. And I was playing last night, um, and sometimes I just try out different things I've never done before, different countries I've never tried before. Uh, and I almost played as Sweden last night. Just joined, uh, we're in the beginning of 1862. Actually, it's January 29th, so we've gotten through a month already. Yeah, it's a long march ahead. It's only 6.49 in the morning, so there's a good chance uh, that we'll get through this whole march and still probably have a chance to launch an attack on day one. The weather's not great. It's snowing and 22 degrees. Not ideal weapon, or not ideal uh, for the weapons. It's cold and the men are chilly. Roads and fields are quite muddy and marching is tiring. Visibility is slightly hindered. My favorite empire of all time? Oh, the British. Uh, what? What? I would say the Roman Empire is the one that probably has impressed me the most. No, Hearts of Iron is not on a mobile device. I was playing on my laptop. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we got a little waiting around. This is what you don't see when I do a regular video because I edit all this part out and you only see the action. But this is what happens with the stream. So you can see they're all following the same road. It's really kind of more of a trail. So we we actually did not go all the way down here. We're actually just crossing over this way. And then it looks like we're going to cross the, the creek, which must be, must be frozen. Although it doesn't look like it is. Or maybe it's just low enough that we can ford it. I have Stellaris. I just haven't played it for a long, long time. Victoria 3, I will definitely be playing that. Um, I'll be playing it in Belgium, though, because that's where I'll be when it comes out, or nearly so. But I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Yeah, I need to learn more about the Roman Empire. It's not an area that I, I feel super confident in my knowledge of I, I know just enough um but there's a lot to learn there dermot i think we all understand you don't like queen victoria not entirely sure why the rant about that but Uh, yeah, I've played all the Call of Duties up until the last few. Uh, getting older now and first-person shooters, uh, I guess my reaction time is just not what it used to be. What's up, zombie? All right, so we're getting into position now. I think I'm going to... Uh, looks like Stovall is good. They're confident. The first California Exiles, all 548 of them. Uh, so I'm going to send them down this road now. Uh, to start trying to scout the enemy, and we'll figure out where he is. I'm hoping we can sneak up and surprise him, because if we take too long to get into position, he'll he's probably facing this way. He'll he'll just shift the whole army, uh, and we won't really have a chance to get at him. Yeah, I just I saw that there was a a patch for Hearts of Iron. I I think I was just downloading it right, right before we started the stream. So you see how long it takes. Uh, it's almost 11 o'clock. So we've been marching for about four or five hours. These guys have got to be exhausted. Um, so I'm rather inclined to take it slow, moving everybody into position here to give them a chance to rest, especially since some of these divisions are still shown as disrupted and fragmented.
I did. Uh, I saw a little bit of the highlights of some of the games um, beyond Ohio State and a little bit of the of the end of the Alabama game. I didn't see much. That reminds me to check uh, check the scores. See what's going on with some of these games. West Brom won today, so that was exciting to see for a change. All right, let's see. Oklahoma's winning. Texas is tied. Illinois is winning. Michigan's beating Penn State. Do I think George V was like Tywin Lannister? Not quite. I think he was stern, but I don't think he was ruthless like Tywin Lannister. Okay, so let's get Pickett moved into line right there. He's showing it's stable now, so we'll start getting some of our artillery into position. Got another cavalry unit there. I'm going to eventually put them out on the wings. First to action for Iverson's battalion. Then we'll get Price's division over on this side. USA is winning the World Cup. I, I'll, I, I don't know, man. The way they've been playing lately. In friendlies, I'm not feeling real confident. Same with England, who I kind of picked to win the World Cup. Penn State just took the lead? Okay. Favorite football team from London? Okay. Uh, let's see. So we've got... I think I'm going to say Spurs. Um... Because we got Spurs, West Ham, Crystal Palace, um, Fulham's down there, aren't they? Um, Chelsea, uh, maybe Chelsea. It's between Chelsea and Spurs. Definitely not Arsenal. Arsenal's playing really well this season, though. Cole, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Alabama's going to beat Tennessee, but I think Tennessee will give them a good game. I'd be totally fine with Belgium winning the World Cup. Still prefer to see England do it, but Belgium I'd be okay with. I say as I'm about to be in Belgium in two and a half weeks. Okay, still no sign of the enemy. Our units are look ah Parsons still looking unstable. So let's actually we're gonna put him in as the reserve. Keep him behind the other units. Same with Clark, he's shown as unstable. So we're gonna move these other two up front and then we'll put the unstable brigades in the rear. I'm going to throw the cav out on the flanks. And we're going to bring the artillery up. And we'll see what happens. I tell you, Alabama's had a couple of close games. They're just ripe for somebody to take them out, but we'll see what happens. I don't want to rush ahead too quickly because visibility is low because of the weather with the snow, and I think he's going to be parked around there. And I think we're going to spot him here in just a second. So if I rush ahead too quickly with my orders, I'm going to run into a mess because they're going to smack into the enemy army. I have a small enough force that my orders go pretty quickly. And we'll keep Mosby right near the center so those orders can go out quick. Where is he? I'm wondering if he maybe was up there guarding the crossings. And just didn't see me coming. Phil, thank you for that. Do I think if the South listens to Claiborne, they had a chance of winning? No, Phil, unfortunately, short of European intervention, I don't see a scenario where the South wins the war.
Yeah, I, as an Ohio State fan, the team that worries me is Georgia this year, not Alabama. All right, they are up there. So let's go ahead then and pounce on the objective real quick. We'll move into position. I think Georgia looks really solid. My picks for the playoffs, um, you know, it's hard to say because when some of these teams start playing each other, but I think Georgia and Ohio State are probably locks. I think there's a good chance that the winner of the Penn State-Michigan game might manage to get in, too. Uh, this could be a year we see two Big Ten teams. It's going to depend on what happens the rest of the year. Ohio State and Georgia are the only two I would say for sure. What am I drinking? Mountain Dew Zero. Who's better, General Lee or Jackson? Definitely Lee Lee. Honestly, here's the thing about Stonewall Jackson. And listen, I love me some Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson had a couple of really bright spots that everybody talks about, right? Um, we talk about first bull run where he was a brigade commander. Uh, led his brigade well there. We got the Valley Campaign where... Every battle he won in the Valley Campaign, he had the advantage in numbers. Sometimes significantly so. The one battle he was outnumbered, he lost. Seven days, he was terrible. Uh, just did not do well there. Uh, i not particularly impressed by his performance at Fredericksburg. Um, don't feel necessarily like he did anything that blows me away at Antietam. Uh, or second bull run. Uh, then you have Chancellorsville, where Chancellorsville was great. But um, other than that big flank attack, which had there been a competent Union commander, would not have worked because they were spotted really early on. Uh, and a competent Union commander would have been prepared for that, and that would have gone very differently. Uh, but people forget that wasn't like a, a guaranteed win after that flank attack. There was still a lot of fighting that took place. Um so, I don't know, I just, I guess I don't see the hype like a lot of other people do about Stonewall Jackson. Yeah, holding space bar, just like in um, Total War. Uh, yeah, I will do a WW2 tier list at some point. So, he's now adjusting to the fact that I have taken the objective. Let's put our uh, reserve out here. He was good at court-martialing his officers, yeah. Your family's from Northeast Ohio? All right. Uh, so somebody asked me, um, Zach asked me, Major League Playoff Predictions. Well, if you'd asked me a couple of days ago, I'd have told you that I think the Dodgers are going to steamroll through the National League. But they're on the verge of getting knocked out by the Padres, which I did not see coming. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I still feel like Dodgers-Astros is the safe pick. But um, Padres might knock the Dodgers off. But I, I still have a hard time thinking. I feel like the Guardians can knock the Yankees off. It's going to be tough, but I feel like they can do it. I don't know if they can get past Houston. This game does not have multiplayer, no. I yes, I've read all of Turtle Dove's uh alternate history series, yes. It's been a long time though. Alright, our artillery has opened up. He's still kind of maneuvering now. Uh, and we're still shown as a minor defeat, which is interesting, and it's mostly because of the morale. Look at federal morale is seventy three. Ours is forty here. Uh, pretty pretty rough morale situation that might get us into some trouble. But let's go ahead now and get some skirmishers out there. All 
He's trying to get around me, it looks like. So hopefully sending the skirmishers out will help engage him a little bit. Your patron sticker came. Awesome. I need to update all of that stuff. I try to update the merch every few months. If Judge keeps batting zero for Cleveland, we'll win. Yeah, he had a rough day yesterday. Your 10th great grandmother was accused of being a witch in New Haven. I was just in New Haven last year. Um, I actually recorded a video, a couple of videos in New Haven that I haven't uploaded yet. I need to do that sometime. That's true, Zach, and that's one thing I think the Guardians have going for them. They've won like 26 out of their last 30 games, so they got hot at the right time. And they've got good pitching, which I think gives them a chance. They've just got to find a way to score runs. They've been getting a lot of guys on base in the playoffs, but they haven't necessarily been getting them all in. Invasion of Illinois in winter, yes. They might be trying to get that cover in the woods, but... I think by sending my skirmishers out, I drew him in right here. I want him to attack me right here. I don't know why my guns moved up there. Oh, they're 24-pounders. That's actually not a bad place for them to keep them right there. I think we'll go ahead and just keep them right there. Because I think we got just enough of a gap here for them to maybe get some canister fire going when the time comes. Maybe, maybe not. Gary Gallagher's work. No, not really. All right, casualties pretty low on both sides. My main concern is the morale. We haven't earned any objective points yet, which is kind of surprising, but... Well, yeah, Churchill's got deep American roots. All right, we're going to send those skirmishers back out. It's a pretty wide open, flat battlefield, other than these woods on the right side. Sunderland! Hey, Michael, are you a uh, Sunderland fan? I loved the documentary series Sunderland Till I Die, and I'm so glad to see them back in the championship. Hoping that they can get back in the Premier League in the next couple of years, but not this year. <laughs> Because that means they'd be taking a spot. Although, it's not like at this point as a West Brom fan, I can really hope for pr uh, promotion. I feel like um, finishing in the top ten is just kind of our goal right now. Uh, the best artillery in the game. I'm a huge fan of the 20-pounder parrots. Well, the Whitworths are nice, too. How would the U.S. have done if they had entered World War I from day one? I think it uh, would have probably been a shorter war. But you never know. I mean, the U.S. would have lost a lot more men. That's for sure. But that would have given Woodrow Wilson more of a say at the table, I think, uh, at Versailles than he ended up having. I mean, he is sending everybody at me right now. Major attack coming here. Let's get uh, get our long range going so that when these skirmishers pull back we'll be ready to fire. So he's got some cav right here. Let's look at the... Uh, so this is McBride's first combat. They've got Springfield muskets. We've got the Willamette Brigade with mu Springfield muskets as well. So no real long accurate weapons. We don't have any rifles in this army. we got to change that. So let's get these guys dismounted. I'm going to pull Clark over so he's in a better position. We're going to tighten in our reserves here. I'm a little worried about McBride because he's basically sent the house at McBride. Oh, there's the end of the day. Day ends early right now because it's, uh, it's winter. So let's catch up on chat. Opinion of Braxton Bragg. Uh, I think his opinion of himself was much higher than anyone else's opinion of him. Jose Ramirez is a beast, and it's so important for the Guardians that they have him. Because they got all these young kids, right? These All these rookies, all these like 22-year-olds on this team. Uh, and then R Ramirez is like that stabilizing influence, and he's the guy that always seems to step up and get the big hit when they need it. 
Um, yeah, so Brantman, as soon as this stream is over, I'm going to be streaming on Vlogging Through History, and I'm going to be doing some some of my own genealogy research, um, but I'm going to do it during Q&A time uh, because I think it'll be helpful to show folks how I research because it'll give you some hints on how to do it yourself. Am I winning? No, not right now, but... Um, We'll see what happens. Yeah, we could do a little bit of breastworks. We don't have a lot of room for that. Um, so let's see what we can throw together real quick here. Right at our center. That's about all we're going to have. Yeah, that's most, most of our points right there. I don't even think I have enough to upgrade these breastworks. No, I don't. So we'll put B there. We'll put McBride there because those are the two stable units of the bunch. And then I think I'm going to put Slack up here a little further. I want to tighten these guys in a little bit. I'm going to hold Parsons back a tad. Uh, we lost some some of those guns there. Uh, do these have, yeah, they don't have line of sight there, I don't think. I might need to back them up a little bit. I don't want to put them right on the line. And we'll hold, hold Clark up as close as we can. Uh, I don't know if I have the numbers to hit their flanks. But at least this way, I'm, I'm a little protected if he's going to attack my center. But if he does come in at the center, I can at least maybe bring units like these California Exiles up to maybe fire on him a little bit on the flanks. All right, but these guys are at least behind breastworks now, so I think that's going to help. I'm going to send... As soon as he commits this attack a little more. I'm going to send Smith, the Jackson County Raiders, up here to hit this artillery. But it looks like he's turning now. How do you fix your credit rating in the game? Um, it's okay if you don't get it higher than B+. Just don't let it drop too much. B+, is fine. Um, you got to spend less, so you got to run up your debt a little less. Um, and then just you know, just keep keep printing money, basically. I mean, because the U.S. went heavily in debt during the war. Yeah, these there's only four guns left over here. I'm gonna yeah, I'll try to see if I can push them out a little more. Uh, McBride's taking a lot of casualties though, and with our morale as low as it is, it's not gonna take a lot to drive me off the main thing I'm concerned about. Alright. Let's go hit this battery while it's in a bit of disarray before they can get them in position. Is there a game I'm looking forward to? Right now, uh, Victoria 3 for sure. Football Manager 23, also coming out at the end of the month. Definitely looking forward to that. I like some of the new features they're going to have there. Um, and then I think the full version of Manor Lords, whenever that may be. I'm excited that uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts is supposed to have their full map and all of their available countries coming out. So they're going to be able to play countries like the U.S. and China for the first time. Michigan's up 16-14. Right, I'm starting to worry a little bit about the, the center here. Uh, my cavalry got driven off trying to hit that battery. They broke. Only lost 11 men. I just I feel like we're in a really difficult situation because the morale was so low coming into this one. And his cab just charged into me, and it looks like it worked. They drove McBride off. Ah, they broke him from the...
try to rally them. The good news is we've got Clark's division right here, so let's move them up, but they're already unstable. Uh, can you steal their guns? Yes, yes you can. Do a Sunderland stream, nice. What are my favorite Ohio regiments besides the 20th? I'll do my, yeah, there goes my cab breaking. Um, 73rd Ohio is one that I like a lot. That was uh, George Nixon. Richard Nixon's grandfather was in that one. They were in the Eastern Theater. Weren't a lot of Ohio units in the Eastern Theater. The 8th Ohio was in the East. Uh, so that's one that I, I love following with great interest. Uh, so now his cav has ridden in and they've broken another one of my units. So that cav under Rally just single-handedly just destroyed my right. Now, he's going to pay for it because my 24-pounders are going to pour into him over here. But at this point, this feels like a... Uh, no, no, not surrender, no. This feels like time to retreat, unfortunately. Thoughts on Holland? Oh, it's sick what he's doing right now. Uh, oh, my goodness. Shadow Wolf, you've been to Vicksburg, one of my favorite places. Can't wait to get back. Best places to visit in Ohio. We're kind of short on fun places to visit, unfortunately. Um, and believe it or not, a couple of our, our biggest... Um, what happened here? I don't have my, um, that's weird. Um, but, uh, the, a couple of the biggest, uh, tourist attractions here in Ohio, uh, I've never been to, even though they're both like less than an hour from my house, the NFL hall of fame and the rock and roll hall of fame, never been to either one. And they're both like 45 minutes to an hour away from me. Uh, manners nice been there many times. I've spoken at all the schools in Menor. Uh, Menor is where Garfield's house is, President Garfield's house. Yeah, there are some battlefields in North Carolina. Uh, lots of Revolutionary War battlefields. A couple of Civil War battlefields. Nice Civil War fort um, down uh, in the southeastern part of the state, right uh, near the Outer Banks. Battle of Columbus is not one I've done a lot of research into. I'm a little concerned about what's happening here. I don't have my my button to hit play and uh, and fast forward and stuff at the moment, so I don't know what's happening. I keep hitting retreat, but I'm worried there's a glitch. UK's got way more in terms of history, absolutely even though it's a lot smaller. It's all packed in, right? I mean, there's just so much more depth to the history because there's thousands of years of it. I have no idea what's happening right now because I've completely lost... I feel like I almost have to um, save the game and exit out. I think it is a bug. Um, so we're going to exit. We're going to quit to the main menu and come back in, see if that fixes the problem here. Air Force Museum, also have never been to that one. <laughs> That's one I really need to get to. Uh, I believe, among other things, that the Air Force Museum down there, right, Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, they have the original grave marker that was on Quentin Roosevelt's grave in France when he was first shot down during World War One. We do have native ruins and tribes, and uh, actually, if you ever go to the Shiloh Battlefield, there are Native American um, burial mounds on the Shiloh Battlefield. Favorite non-British royal dynasty. Mm. I've been very interested lately in the Hohenzollerns of Prussia. But I think maybe I would probably have to say the Romanovs, who are also kind of German, like the British royal family is. Yeah, it looks like... I, th I think we fixed it. Yeah, it looks like we're good now. 
But we are not retreated at the moment. Even though I still think it's probably the best bet. Although we're doing all right casualty wise. Our morale's at 21. Yeah, that's just a brutal morale situation. And now you can see he's starting to get out on my flank. Now let's keep fighting for a minute. Maybe the glitch was, ah no, there goes slack, we're done. We're out. We gotta get back to the south and build up the morale on this army. Yes, when I went to Hawaii, we did go to the Arizona Memorial. That was 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, we did go to the Arizona Memorial and the USS Missouri. And to the uh, the Pacific, uh, the Punch Bowl, Pacific National Cemetery there. Oh no, Dikembe Mutombo has a brain tumor. That's sad to hear. Uh, Yankees and Guardians don't play till 7.30 tonight. Oh no, 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 no. All right, time's up. Good, because I was losing my 24-pounders there. They were getting hit. Ah, oh, that was brutal. That was not good. I've not been to the Air and Space Museum in Tucson. My mom lives in Tucson. I have to keep that in mind. Why am I so low on morale? Because my, uh, my army was behind enemy lines in Union territory and not being well supplied. Your grandfather's buried at the Punch Bowl. Awesome. Do I think Halloween should be a thing? I, I'm indifferent toward it. My son loves it. It's his favorite holiday, he says. I got no problem with it. Battle of Franklin's one I definitely want to cover more. I need to go in. Uh, now that I added the, I did the upgrade to supply, um, I need to upgrade my supply depots. We should do that first. Now that I can do level two and level three supply depots. Defeat at Cairo. Not a good day. Not a good day. Uh, so they're going to fall back. Uh, back into the U.S. See, he's got two armies. The Army of the Illinois is there with 5,500 men and his Army of the West with 9,000. Uh, so we're going to pull back. Let's check our supply depots. We can start upgrading those to level two. Some of those key ones. So let's definitely upgrade this one right here. That's the one where our Army of the Tennessee is. Our Army of Tennessee. Always got to remember, Union Army is named after Rivers. So that would be the Army of the Tennessee for the Union, but not for the Confederacy. All right, what's going on over here? How's Army of Northern Virginia's supply? Their supply is good because they're supplied from Richmond. No Union Army even really threatening in Northern Virginia right now. I've got the Army of the Shenandoah over here. No supply depot for them either, but they seem to be okay on supply. So Catherine Furnace, this is actually, um, that's on the Chancellorsville battlefield. That's one of the key landmarks. If you retrace the steps of Stonewall Jackson's flank attack at Chancellorsville, you go right past Catherine Furnace, and there was some skirmishing that took place there in the rear of Jackson's assault column. So we, we were talking about where did we say the ironworks were that we needed to upgrade? Was it Knoxville? Yeah, there it is. Let's upgrade that. Let's see what's happening out west. Uh, Patreon order of battle video. As soon as I get these last few, I might have to go ahead and make it because um, I've got all of the units recruited except for one. And the reason I don't have that one is because they requested Florida. And I have no Florida units at the moment. Or like I, I don't have the ability. I'll show you here. Um... I've got 812 recruits from Florida, so until I get to 1,500, I can't recruit from Florida. So I might just go ahead and make it and then just say, hey, I'm still waiting to be able to do this one unit. Yes, the, there is a recommendation. I might do a video about that. There has been a recommendation for the Department of Defense uh, on renaming 
all of the forts that are named after Confederate generals. I do like some of the names that they're going to use. Like one of them is going to be renamed for William Johnson, um, who was a part of the Harlem Hellfighters in World War I, our Medal of Honor recipient. Uh, I love that they're going to name one after him. I think that's awesome. Um, one of my favorite soldiers, one of my favorite stories from the First World War. Um, so AP Hill is down as far as Columbia, South Carolina. He's on his way to Knoxville, where we'll have to build a supply depot. Uh, Franklin was where the Confederacy was just, uh, that's right outside of Nashville. I think it's just south of Nashville, um, where they launched that disastrous frontal assault. It's where Patrick Claiborne was killed. A bunch of generals were killed. Um, it was just a complete debacle. Counter-propaganda. Occupation administration, no. Suppressed population, no. Um, I like administration reform. That'll reduce the time for activating new policies and acts. Let's do that. I need to get to Franklin. The Confederate statue is being taken down. Um... Yeah, Brand Man, I will, I will say this. Um, I understand the renaming of the, the bases. I mean, if you really think about it, we do have military bases that are being named after people who rebelled against this country, and it is kind of a weird thing that we've done that. Uh, so I get that. I also understand your point about the fact that some of the names seem to be a bit of a stretch. Um because they're going out of their way. Typically, bases are named after, like, you know, leaders, like you said, high ranking officers. Uh, so that, you know, I think one of them is being named after uh, Dr. Mary Edwards Walker, who's the only female Medal of Honor recipient. Um, how many volunteers do I have to beef up my Western Army? So, a lot of the, the Western Army right now, the issue is that. I have those men coming. I just have sent some of those army, some of those units home for replenishing. Missouri Iron Brigade will be back in seven days. Flemish Lions are a month out. Yuma Territorial Guards are 26 days out. Swedish Royal Guards will be arriving in nine days. Let's upgrade their weapons. Um, Finn Cowboys are 26 days out from being back. Um, so I've got a lot that'll be coming there. Let's take a look real quick. Trans-Mississippi Theater is in bad shape. Army of the Shenandoah uh, is good. We're just kind of right now just kind of holding the line. Typically in my, in my Confederate campaigns, he just throws everything at Richmond, and I just have a hard time holding Richmond, and I end up losing most of Virginia, but I win it by doing really well in, in the West. Uh, that has not been the case so far here. Um, he actually isn't really pushing real hard in some of these places. I need to pull the Trans-Mississippi Theater back, though. I'm actually going to pull... It won't even let me pull him back. Uh, Mason Mouse, I have not seen that. That's a good point, Brand Man. You're right. It's kind of like us with the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, like, I was at a football game last night, and uh, when they announced the score of the game, they called them the Indians. Uh, a lot of people here just still call them the Indians, even though they've been re uh, renamed. So we're still kind of engaged. Oh, we're retreating to the north. I don't like that. Battle Hymn of the Republic has been published. I'm going to look at the status of our weapons that have been ordered. 109 days. 109 days. 109 days. 109 days. All those cavalry weapons are 109 days out. Our next order of Augustine's 115 days out. Planes rifles we got coming, but not for a long time. I don't really have anything coming anytime soon. Let's look at what's available for orders. Just 24 pounders. Let's order some of those. Projects available. Not much at the moment. Change in army command out west. Um, 
I don't know. Let's see how Mosby's doing. He's actually got some pretty good stats. His initiative's good. His cunning's good. Leadership and administration, those are up. I mean, he is defamed, but I feel like with some time, he might get rehabilitated. I'm just not sure I've got a better option available to me right now. Um, if, if they're there, I just don't see it. I just want I, I really just need to get them out of there, but I can't at the moment. See, they're, they're just in bad shape all the way around. Uh, high officer casualties, low ammunition, attrition, low on food. Do I think Robin Hood was real? I think there's probably some basis for those stories. How much of it? I don't know. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So weapons have been delivered. What did, what did we get delivered? 10,000 Springfield rifled muskets. So that helps. Um, who was rehabilitated? John Graciot, he's a low-ranking, uh, he's just a colonel. All right, um, could do King Cotton 2. I think I want to do Diplomacy 3 next, though. Um, European intervention still at 30% right now. I could do Industrialization 3, which is a step toward eventually being able to do... Um, slavery restriction act but i can't do any of that until closer to the end of 1862 anyway because chapter three won't unlock for a while uh, i think i think we're going to do diplomacy Wal walter raleigh's treason like a lot of the treasons of that day i think it's all in the eye of the beholder and it's really just about um, popularity and unpopularity of people. I'm not entirely sure he did anything that I would say rises to the level of treason. Uh, we don't really need rebore muskets. I'm going to hold off on any other things right now. We're actually doing okay in terms of Navy tonnage. But I'm just afraid to take my Navy out. I feel like Germany during World War I. I'm afraid to take my Navy out because I don't want to lose it. Do I think multiplayer could work with this game? Maybe for the battles. Maybe they could start with that rather than a whole campaign. Uh, but at least maybe do the battles and, and allow multiplayer battles. I think that would be a lot of fun. Okay, my Trans-Mississippi Theater has escaped. Uh, now we need to try and get them back home and get them somewhere near some sort of supply. I just can't move them right now. Live stream in the middle of college football and major league playoffs. Yeah, well, I mean, Saturday's when I can stream. You know what I mean? And that's when a lot of people are available. Otherwise, I'd be streaming in the middle of a day, like on a Wednesday afternoon, and there's just not a lot of people that, that are available then. All right, Western Army... Looks like he's converging on me with two armies over here. Army of the Missouri only has 3,000 men right now. Department of the West has 15,000. So let's do this. Let's send John Hunt Morgan this way. See if we can't hit one of those armies without having to face both of them. Problem is it's going to take so long for him to get those orders and start moving. Favorite Shakespeare play? Oh, that's a tough one. Henry V. Yeah, Ohio State does not play this week. He just enacted military too. That's going to help him. Oh, why were we routed? I didn't even fight. I didn't even get a chance to fight. The good news is that the Western Army is going to be able to link up now with the Trans-Mississippi Theater. Here's what I need to do for them. I need to get them... Party Goer Productions, hello and thank you. Um, give me... Where's the one that allows for... Flying Column. That helps with the supplies they can carry. That's what I want. Alright, let's move... I'm going to try to move both of these guys all the way back to Memphis for now. 
just so I can kind of replenish them, get their supplies up, uh, get them in a better position morale-wise to start launching incursions. Let's see, has Army of the Northwest, their, their situation's also pretty bad because they're moving in the winter. That's the problem here. But once we get them to Knoxville, we'll build a base of supply there, we'll build a fort there, and we'll kind of go from there. I mean, Austria did help Germany. They just didn't do it very effectively. All right. So here's the situation. He's got three armies in Missouri right now. I'm trying to get both of these armies out of there and pull them back to Memphis. Meanwhile, Johnston's sitting here in a pretty good state of readiness. The problem is I've got two separate ways that I can go here. Fort Walker's only got 45 garrison troops. I might, I'm might i going to move him up now that we're into March because there's a supply depot there. And maybe if we can threaten them there, that'll help. All right, so AP Hill's finally pulling into Knoxville. Until his readiness gets up, gets up I'm not going to be able to even start building a supply depot. I can't do anything with his readiness at the moment where it is. Union's up to 197,000 men in the field now. What triggers the instant surrender? Um, their morale, national morale, has to drop below 25. For the war to end. And you can see right now both are super high. So that's not happening anytime soon. Um, projects. Okay. What do we got here? Rebuild ironclads. Training manuals. That's not. That wouldn't be a bad thing. British rifles. Gets us the Whitworth rifle. Ooh. I don't know. I feel like training manuals would do more good for me right now. Medium range carbines. Parrot rifles. That would allow field armies to utilize the 10, 20, and 30 pound versions of the parrot. Ooh, that's good. You love me destroying Monsieur Z's video the other day? How long has the war lasted so far? We're coming up on a year. All right, um, I'm going to go with training manuals. I think that'll help with a lot right now. Send envoys. That'll improve relations with the European great powers. Let's do that. That bumped us up to 35% for British intervention. British intervention is going to take a hit when the Union passes um, the Emancipation Proclamation, which I fully expect them to do at some point. All right. French invasion happening in Mexico. He's still doing nothing against my army, of, uh, against Virginia. I feel like, all right, see, there's four armies up around here that aren't doing anything. I wonder if I could keep those guys occupied. Joe Johnston's only got 20,000 men, so there's not a lot he's going to be able to do. But it just seems like there's not a lot near Washington. Maybe now's the time to make a move. Get a little aggressive here in the east where I've got nice, strong armies that are um, in a good state of readiness. All right, there's Diplomacy 3 for us. We could actually go to Diplomacy 4 now. Grant or Patton? Ooh. Um, overall command of a theater, I would want Grant. In charge of an, an attacking force, uh, Patton. I, would, I, would, I like them for different reasons. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, 
Credit rating's still pretty good. I'm going to go right to Diplomacy 4. Let's take a look at our spending for a second here. Yeah, see, we're spending a ton on diplomacy because I, I, I really want to get British intervention uh, as quickly as I can. And, and military I'm spending a lot on. As long as the credit rating stays, we're okay. Okay, Army of Northern Virginia is going to cross down here. And we're into a fight. Here's the problem. If we get bogged down here, then that buys time for him to reinforce. So I want to assault. I want I want to get this fight happening as quickly as I can. Come on, give me a chance to actually fight these guys. There we go. Now we can actually fight the battle. Favorite World War II general is Patton. Favorite as a general, not favorite as a human being. Um, not necessarily the best person. Definitely some very negative aspects to his character. But if I can win this battle... And then take that fort, I might be able to at least threaten a little bit. McClellan for a resting do nothing army. Absolutely, 100%. If you need a, if you got an army to just sit in there and you need to train them, McClellan's probably your guy. The subsidies fund the projects that give you the bonuses. Yes, they do. Lee or Zhukov? Zhukov for frontline control, definitely. Boneless, definitely. Always boneless for the chicken. All right, so this is interesting because we are actually defending here. And this is, the, uh, this is the Bull Run Battlefield. He's got 19,000 men. To my 34,000. I, I feel like I don't want to defend here. He he could be up here. Actually, he is up there. So here's what I want to do here. Um, I think I'm going to send Longstreet. To try and... I don't think I'll be able to get to Sudley Church before he crosses. Maybe we can send the calf. To do that. But the rest I'm going to put over there. Oh, no, he's right there. Look at that. How did he get into that position so quickly? Okay. All right. So now we know where he is. I don't know much about Albania at all, unfortunately. I do need a win for this live stream. And holy cow, there he is over there. So we know exactly where he is. Uh, we've got the numbers on our side for sure. We can dig in right behind the water here, which is a good thing. We're going to throw Buckner over here. Got to set up the artillery. That's actually not a bad spot for the artillery. I want to let me control them anymore. Oh, because I unlimbered them. Okay, that's fine. They're all facing the wrong way, though. That's the only problem. Okay, who we got here? We got Longstreet here in the center. And then we got Smith's division that I'm going to hold in reserve. We'll put Buford out on the flank. We've got a fence right here, so that helps. And we, these are Mississippi rifles, so they get nice long range. Perfect. Verdun or the Somme? It depends on what you mean. Like, which one am I more interested in? Which one would I rather not be at? Those kinds of things. So, if you could be more specific. 
All right, so we're into the action right away. Let's get the Washington artillery turned around. There we go. Start firing. We gotta get long range going right away. I'm gonna move Grigsby up. I'm gonna move the Cav up. I'm gonna bring one of these reserve brigades over there. He's trying to shift right away. Let's not let him do that. I'm gonna send skirmishers out from Buckner and force him to hold right here. I'm hoping I can win a really quick victory here. I feel like that's certainly possible. Alright, so he's spreading out. He doesn't know what to do with me being right on top of him like this. I've never seen Dad's Army. Underrated Sabaton album. Oh, I don't know. Because I like all of them. But, um... I still think the, uh... The current one is the best. But that... You know what? Honestly... I always think the newest one is the best when it comes to artists that I like, so I'm really biased in that regard. Great War is really, really good, too. All right, we just we really got to press things here. Try and uh, get a quick victory. Italy's performance in World War II, um, I don't, I just, I feel like their heart was never really in that war, you know what I mean? Like they were kind of like dragged kicking and screaming into the Axis by Mussolini. Which is why I think they gave up as quickly as they did. Alright Garnet, you just gotta hold tight there buddy. I wanna move cotton, uh, cotton balers up a little bit. All right, we already drove back Jackson, so that's good. I feel like this is a easily winnable battle. We drove back two units over there. We wiped out a battery already. Troops from the fort? I don't know. That's a great question. I think I'll still have to lay siege to the fort after I drive off this army. And that concerns me because it's going to slow me down while he can send some of his other armies over to hit me. But my morale's in a good situation. This is going to give me some experience for my units, which is good. This is a well-armed army in terms of the weapons that I've got. I've got cav and infantry here, and they're driving them back. Cav is going to follow him. I'm watching Garnet's morale, though. It's not fantastic right now. I think casualties are going pretty well. Yeah, it's 1,600 for him, 1,300 for me, which is a much higher percentage of his army. His morale is lower than mine, so that's good. There we go. We drove those guys off. Let's go ahead and send the Tarhi. Oh, who was wounded? Grigsby, commander of the Cotton Balers. That's right here. And one of our units just broke. Is that Yule? It is. Yule was wounded. They lost 700 men, and he broke, but that's okay. We've got reinforcements, the Bibb County boys. Uh, we're going to send the Tar Heel rifles up. So, a pretty strong fight he's putting up on his left. Oh, boy. Why is McCulloch facing that way? That's not good. And he broke. Darn it. Okay, that's not good. America's most loyal ally, I would say, in the last hundred years has got to be the Brits. That's why they call it the special relationship. Alright, 
let's bring the all Australian volunteers up to support Anderson here. VMI infantry in their first combat. We gotta get them some better weapons though. They're still fighting with mixed muskets. Let's pull skirmishers back for Armagh Irish and get them up on the line. Michigan just scored. Wow. That one's a back and forth game, isn't it? Stanley, it never goes well when I try to delegate. That's why I micromanage. Now, if this were a battle where we were dealing with 80, 90,000 men on each side, it might be a different story. Uh, but this is a, a number of brigades that I can, I can still manage pretty effectively. All right, Walton's getting into position now on the line. Rigsby lost their commander, so I'm a little concerned about their morale situation. Okay, we got Ramsier over here with the Tar Heel Rifles. And we're about to win the battle. I think he's going to start falling back here soon. I think it was... Sean, I think it was... The Italians were poorly led. And the terrain was terrible for fighting those battles. Yeah, you know, I need to get into fire and maneuver. I haven't had much of a chance to play it. Australian volunteers. Gotta keep an eye on them. I'm a little concerned about what's happening on my right. But I think if we break one more unit. Oh, we hit the end of the day. Darn. Oh, all right. He, he retreated at the end of the day. Perfect. All right. We'll have to look at the performance of the units there uh, and see who gets the battle honors from that one. Battle of Fort Washington, March of 62. So we're hitting right about the time that historically was when McClellan starts kind of moving down toward the peninsula. And we're also getting to, this is that time in between Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson falling and then the Battle of Shiloh out west. I've never been metal detecting and I really would like to somewhere where there's some good stuff to find. A general to deal with a riot, now rebellion, Grant or Washington? Grant. I, Washington wasn't a good general, honestly. Washington was a great leader. He was not a great general. Okay, so let's pause here. And... Um, I want to look at the Army for a second, the Army of Northern Virginia, after that battle. And we're kind of looking at um, history here. Uh, so a lot of these units were not real heavily involved. You can see that here. Um, McCulloch's unit did pretty well. Uh, but honestly, the Fighting Tigers, 168 suffered, inflicted 702. Uh, boy, McCulloch, the Emerald Guard, they were brutalized in that battle. They took 700 casualties and only inflicted 145. Same thing here with Yule, who uh, is going to need replaced. We don't have a lot of great options. Deering works. All right, Deering's going to take command of Yule's brigade. And we lost Grigsby as well. Man, there's just not a lot of uh, options available. Dabney Maury, that'll work. We'll put him in that one. Okay, uh, so I think it's going to be the Fighting Tigers who are going to get the battle honors for this one. So we'll give them that star. We're going to give um, 
wheat a promotion to Brigadier General. I'm looking at my... All right, I think it's time to promote... Oh, Longstreet's already a Major General. We can't really promote him again. Okay, um, so we're good there. So let's look at that situation. John Fremont is now the um, commander-in-chief for the Union armies. And I want to look at the situation here now because it looks like he has, in fact, moved some of his other armies down there. Uh, the 36th Army there with 12,000 men. Army of the Susquehanna with 8,500 men. See, the main thing here still is to try and hit them one at a time. Um, so we'll send the Army of Northern Virginia to come over here and try and hit the 35th Army. Uh, Army of Shenandoah, it looks like he's going to get a one-on-one -on -one against the Army of Northeastern Virginia. So that's good news there. And let's look at now where we're at with some of these units that we sent out for replenishing. Uh, oh, you know what? We need to check weapons, too real quick while I'm thinking about it because there were a couple of units that did not have good weapons still yeah there we go first VMI let's upgrade them to Springfield rifled muskets everybody else in this army seems to have decent weapons now um, we're gonna oh yeah there we go Up upgrade Washington artillery to 10 pounder parrots that's excellent so now we've got two units with 10 pounder parrots there there's only six guns in Clark's battery so we've got a lot of 10-pounder parrots. Um, and we don't really have any other options at the moment. I could probably stand to upgrade our cav, but we don't have any new cav weapons at the moment. Longstreet and Lee had different ideas of what it took to win the war. Lee want, or Longstreet wanted to sit back, fight on the defensive, and fight a war of attrition. Lee wanted to try and make it happen on the battlefield. Uh, just a different view of... of the war uh, and how to win it so uh, what if sweden wins a great northern war different world man i mean europe looks completely different with a strong swedish empire i think russia probably doesn't rise to prominence like it does uh, maybe not prussia either could be a completely different world an autobiography i would recommend it could be about anyone grant by ron chernow fantastic completely changed my view of the man all right so that was not a long stream um, but we're going to wrap it up right there because I am also going to be streaming over on vlogging through history right now. That's scheduled for three 30, but I'm going to bump it up to three o'clock start time. Um, cause I got to check on my kids and stuff like that. So thank you guys for joining me for this. Um, I will go ahead and do the, um, we'll get the, the patron, uh, order of battle video made for you guys. So you can see, uh, where every unit is on that. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you again real soon.